Okay, is everybody here? Right, let's start. Now today I'm going to talk about language acquisition and language learning. As you're all studying linguistics, it is necessary to consider how we humans manage to master the communication tool which we call language. First of all, let's clarify the difference between language acquisition and language learning. The American linguist Stephen Krashen described the difference between these two terms quite clearly and briefly. Language acquisition refers to the subconscious process of internalising a language and its rules. In contrast, language learning is the type of conscious language development which often takes place in the foreign language classroom. Research into first language, or L1 acquisition, can be very useful when we come to think about how people learn a second language, or L2, effectively. It is also important to remember that there are many factors which influence second language development. Language learning is not a uniform process because people are different and live in diverse environments. So later, we are going to take a closer look at the variables which play a role in language learning. But before we look at second language learning, let's investigate more closely how we acquire our mother tongue. Chomsky, the American linguist, has completed a great deal of important research in the field of L1 acquisition since the 1960s. According to Chomsky, although environment does play a role in L1 acquisition, all humans are genetically programmed with a language acquisition device. This brain function enables children to process and order the language that they are exposed to. Chomsky's hypothesis claims that the complex nature of language and its rules would be too difficult for us to acquire if our brains were not equipped with a language processor. It is precisely this capability, known as a universal grammar, which enables any child in any country to learn any first language efficiently, provided that they are given sufficient exposure from birth. Now, let's move on to second language learning. Chomsky has also studied how people learn a second language. His research supports the idea that language is made up of a system of rules. Chomsky believes that all natural languages contain a common set of central rules. There are also other rules which differ from language to language. The theories developed by Chomsky indicate that when learning a second language, learners find it easier to learn these central rules than the rules which are unique to that particular language. When learners find an L2 rule, which isn't a central transferable rule, they will try to understand that rule by using their knowledge of their first language. This can lead to errors through L1 interference. So now we know a little more about the different processes involved in language acquisition and learning. As I mentioned earlier, the way in which we learn second languages is determined by a number of key factors which differ from person to person. The nature of these variables can assist or inhibit the internalization of the rule system that enables second language learning. Clearly, different learners learn in different ways. It is impossible to describe all the factors which can play a role in language learning. However, there are certain key factors which have been identified by linguists. These include age, motivation, aptitude, personality, and cognitive or learning style. In contrast to popular opinion, children are not necessarily the best language learners in all respects. But there is evidence that age does play an important role. As you might expect, the best native speaker-like results are achieved by people who have the maximum number of years of exposure. Yet research shows that teenagers are better at learning grammar and vocabulary than either children or adults. However, pronunciation tends to be more accurate in learners who started at a very young age. Motivation is also crucial. Language learning motivation is usually divided into two main areas integrative and instrumental. Integrative motivation is driven by a want to join or mix effectively with a native speaker group which uses the target language. Incidentally, where there is no dominant native speaker group, a pidgin can develop. This is a new means of communication with elements of more than one language. If this pidgin is then taught to children of its speakers, it is known as a creole. 
Instrumental motivation is the study of a language to achieve an aim such as the passing of a test or getting a better job. Most people have mixed motivation, but research seems to show that integrative motivation is the most powerful. Aptitude is the ability to systemize the rules required in language learning. It is not to be confused with intelligence, which also describes non-language related skills. Interestingly, although our universal grammar enables everyone to master an L1, it seems that our capacity to deal with the challenges and differing rules of a second language can vary from person to person. It is also believed that our personality and cognitive style might play a role in our learning. However, it should be pointed out that just how they influence learning is not yet clear. Research has not yet been able to identify the best personality type, as no two people are exactly the same. Personality is, of course, the things which make you individual, whether you are an optimist or a pessimist, whether you are cautious or a risk-taker, whether you are introvert or extrovert. Some people think that outgoing students might find it easier to learn speaking skills as they are less worried about making mistakes. But being good speakers doesn't necessarily make them good writers or give them a good memory for vocabulary. Nevertheless, difference in people's personality has led to an understanding that people also learn in different ways. This is why, in recent times, teachers have been encouraged to consider different methodologies and approaches. You've probably heard of terms such as the communicative approach, audiolingualism, and the once popular grammar translation method. An understanding of multiple intelligences and cognitive or learning styles is also a useful way to take different learners' needs into account. So, to summarise, language acquisition is concerned with how we learn our L1, and language learning focuses on how we learn second or foreign languages. Chomsky supports the existence of a universal grammar which pre-programs the brain to make sense of the different rules of language. As far as L2 learning is concerned, our success may be influenced by a number of factors or key variables. One key variable is the motivation that a learner has for learning a second language. Instrumental motivation is the kind that you feel when you want to do something with a new language. Integrative motivation is the kind that you feel when you want to become part of the speech community of the new language. Another key variable is personality, or the things that make you individual. Taking account of these variables in the classroom could have an impact on the speed and efficiency of learning. OK, well that's it for today. Next time we'll try to identify some more qualities of the good language learner. I'll also explain why different learning styles and intelligence types can affect language development. Now don't forget to do a bit of research on that before you come. Well, thanks. See you next week.